That's pretty spot on. That's pretty, wow. I've noticed for my results, when I switched my newsletter profile picture to these types of images and my YouTube thumbnails, I doubled and tripled my traffic. I started getting a lot more clicks. Hello everyone. I have Jonathan here with me today. I'd call him my AI guy friend. <laughs> <laughs> He's always sharing on LinkedIn, especially his LinkedIn newsletters and YouTube too, all the updates about AI that I think are really relevant for small business owners who find themselves becoming creators. And I get asked a lot about this. As people start growing their personal brands, they're like, am I a creator? And I think technically we're all creators in some way, but you really find yourself having to create a lot more content and a lot of high quality content. And part of that journey, especially if you're going to do LinkedIn newsletters or longer form educational content, like LinkedIn live events or audio events or YouTube videos, one of those things that you'll have to have is a thumbnail. And as someone who has had to do shoots where I have to do a hundred facial expressions and different outfits and all of that, that could be very tedious, time consuming, so on and so forth. So there's an AI option now that could help you create thumbnails at scale. And I've never talked about this because I think most of the ones previous to this one were pretty horrible. And all the ones I tried up until this point, they looked fake over the top. And I think that this one, Jonathan has found a gem and he's going to share it with us today. So intro yourself, give them a little bit more context, and then let's start. My name is Jonathan Green. I'm just passionate about AI. Shane is a good friend of mine. And I was doing the exact same thing where I would take all the pictures of me in different poses and different expressions. And then I'm making the thumbnail. I'm going, oh, I don't have the expression that I want. Why didn't I think of the one expression I wanted? Or I'm pointing the wrong direction. And when I look at the big creators on YouTube, they have these massive photo shoots where they have multiple camera people. They have a crew. They have location. They're on top of a hidden city in Russia or a mountain in South America to do these amazing thumbnails. And I can't compete with that. I don't want to go to a location shoot shoot for every YouTube video. So I was looking for an AI option to let me compete. And that's exactly what I want to share with you guys. I think this one's pretty exciting. We're going to show you guys some really cool stuff today. The first part is the website is called artflow.ai. And what's crazy is that it's free. I can't believe it because there are so many of those LinkedIn AI profile builders that will put in different outfits that are really expensive. This bypasses all of that. You can create your actor and it's crazy easy. So it shows you what type of pictures you just want to click male or female adult or child and give your actor a name short letters that you'll remember. And then you drag and drop in 20 pictures and you can just stand in front of a white wall and just take pictures like this around yourself to take 20 pictures and it will train the AI because of me it used to take 20 minutes to train the AI and now it takes like two or three days because I've told so many people about this tool. Mm -hmm. But it does this for free, which is crazy good because I've tried every tool for this and you just want pictures of you by yourself, mostly about your face Don't worry about your body and from the front. So you don't want pictures like with your friends or from the back of your head. Those are the only things to avoid. And that's the training process. Now I'm going to take you through how to create the amazing images. Every month you get 100 free image generations and each one's a set of four. So you actually get 400 free images per month, which is very generous of them. I'm going to take you through it. So initially for my first prompt, I just have Shanae, LinkedIn profile picture, professional smiling boardroom and realistic style. So the magic of Artflow is that is in the styles. You click the different buttons to get different results. I have trouble knowing what each of these dogs mean, so I have to test it to get the result, but I have my favorite. So for this image, we now have a really amazing profile picture from the boardroom, and we can start playing around with it by just creating more generations and just choosing one that you like. So instead of having to do a photo shoot and you can get different results just by rerunning, you can add in cinematic so it feels a little bit more action. So you can see we've added more lighting to the picture just by clicking the cinematic button. So this is realistic plus cinematic. And then I want it to be a little more exciting. So now speaking at a conference. That's crazy. So I had to Google this because I didn't know what are the best women's business suits. And it said Dior. So I put wearing Dior suit, speaking on stage to a large crowd. So this is a specific brand. You can actually just by changing whatever brand it is, I'll show you some Dolce and Gabbana stuff in a minute. And whatever brand you like, you can immediately create a thing. And just by the crowd behind you, you guys feel the different effect. You go, wow, it's a superstar. Look at that audience. Very, very simple to create this effect. And we play around with it. So this isn't realistic and cinematic. If we want to get a little bit more adventurous, we can rerun the prompt again and add in the word fantasy. 
So just by adding fantasy, the suit is like sharper. I think that's the right word to use. The crowd seems to be older. There's a lot more gray hair in the crowd and I clicked one button. The thing I like about this tool is it doesn't require a lot of prompt complexity. You can choose whatever brand you want of suit and you just run it again as many times as you want if you don't like the exact pick. You're gonna have different styles and different cuts and if you like one and wanna do more of it, you can click on that picture and say make a variant to get more similar to like this. So if you wanna change this, you can add in smiling or frowning. You can change the facial expression with one word as well. From here, I wanted to add in one more style, which I added in science fiction. So now there's robots in the background or there's more of a futuristic spacesuit. This almost looks like armor. So I like that one. <laughs> and always to remember the point here is to entertain as much as it is to capture attention. Like we're not trying to deceive. No one thinks that she was really on a spaceship commanding a spaceship, but it captures your attention and it's fun. Like that's why I really like using this tool is that I can always have a good time. And I reran this a couple of times to get different types of outfits. You can see when I switch to Dolce & Gabbana from Dior, it starts to adding all this filigree. Mm -hmm. I think that's the right word. And the armor adds a completely different effect. So by changing the brand, we can get a whole different result. So to get really good results, I recommend just starting with wearing a tuxedo or wearing a suit and then just adding in whatever brand you like, because they're all in here, all the well-known ones. Here, I moved it to a boat. So now we're on a yacht. A lot of what I do is once I have a prompt I like, I'll just add and take away from the recipes to find one that I really liked. And we always want to think about, is this something that would stop the scroll? If I was scrolling past a feed on Instagram, would I stop and go, well, that's interesting. That's really the measure of what I'm looking for. And the same thing on YouTube, is it interesting enough that someone's gonna stop? I've noticed for my results, when I switched my newsletter profile picture to these types of images and my YouTube thumbnails, I doubled and tripled my traffic. I started getting a lot more clicks. So you actually was... have data that these fantastical or yeah. fantasy style thumbnails get more clicks to your YouTube channel. Yeah, it made a massive change, almost like a hockey stick. Wow. So before that, I was using the pictures. If you remember where I took a picture of myself here being like, and I would outline myself in white and try different effects. And those were okay, but really stuck at flatlining. As soon as I started playing with this tool, I noticed a difference. If they don't click, then you won't get views. And if you look at some of the biggest YouTubers like Mr. Beast, he's been doing these half real looking, half fantastical, borderline fantastical thumbnails for a long time. That's where a lot of my influence came from. So I was doing research on thumbnails and I learned that Mr. Beast makes 20 thumbnails for every video. So not only does a complicated photo shoot, because then I was like, how can I make one? Now I have to make 20. So for every video I post, I now make three to four thumbnails. Because it's quick, I can actually do that. I don't have to do a yeah. costume change. And with just adding one word, I can change everything. So here, <laughs> I switched to, this is now Prada. Prada gown from Dolce & Gabbana, standing on a yacht, helicopter exploding in the background, which is one of my favorite prompts. Because oh if you always look, you can't not look. The bottom right one, with whatever this explosion is, you just it catches your eye. And the line is going towards you. So it actually pulls people watching towards you in the foreground. I also learned that from studying YouTube videos. There's a lot about lines. So I want it to point towards the star of the video. And we can play around with the background as well once we switch outfits. So here I ran it again. This is fantasy plus science fiction. So once I get a prompt I like, I'll just add and take away from the recipe, from the styles. I only really use realistic, cinematic, horror, science fiction, fantasy, and then neon punk, which I'll show you in a minute. Horror sometimes gets really good facial expressions. It makes you look more serious. It doesn't look really scary. So here we add in horror. Look at your facial expression. It just looks more intense, more serious. Mm -hmm. That's the change in the effect. It mostly changes the facial expression and kind of makes the person look like they're a little bit mad, but not a lot mad. Mm -hmm. So it creates a really good effect. And we have a mix. It will always just generate lots of different outfits and you just find the ones that you like. So what does the small, medium, large thing on the left mean? And then what does the art flow V2 on mean? Okay, great questions. So it just means you're on the newer version of Artflow. So okay. if you click it off, it will do the earlier version, which is just not as good, so I never use it. Mm -hmm. This is, if you want to do a variance, like rerun it again, you choose how much variance, a little bit, medium, or a lot when it generates a new batch of them. This is only for regenerations, what it's showing. When you generate, it doesn't show that list. It just shows mm -hmm. the prompt and the styles. And then there's different sizes, three, two at the top. Yeah, so you can choose square, vertical or vertical sideways. I always do in vertical sideways for what I'm doing and then I crop it because I'm doing YouTube thumbnails. I'll show you this one as well. Director mode allows you to position the body. I will tell you that Artflow is 100% uncensored. In director mode, it will sometimes randomly make you naked. <laughs> so 
The good thing is I talked to the support about it when it started happening and they go, we can't see your generation, so they can't see it. So no one can see it. They can't replicate it. Sometimes it will randomly do that. Just be aware of that. Just from what we've seen, obviously it's still imperfect, but it's pretty, pretty good. And it's better than what I've seen and faster and just more detailed from what I've seen than any other AI tool that does human features. Most AIs I use, and I've made a whole series of videos about this, when I put in my picture, it just is really mean. It will make me 60 plus, 70 plus, 80 years old. I'll look homeless. I have a picture of me holding my daughter that I ran through an AI enhancer and it turned her feet into hands. So she had four sets of hands. It was like turned her into a monster. And my kids were laughing. I was like, it's not just bad, it's mean. So the fact that it's easy to train is really astounding and that the images come out really cool. And you can have different ideas. Like here is you just riding a dragon. That's so I don't so have- That's so cool. Oh. I love the bottom left one and the top yeah. right one. So here's the bottom left enlarged. This is fantasy plus sci-fi plus cinematic. And the prompt is just riding a dragon. You don't have to be a prompt engineer. This is adding an anime. So I can't use the anime prompt, but you can. It still kind of looks like you. When I use anime, it looks nothing like me at all because mm. it switches to a cartoon. It looks like a complete stranger. This a little bit looks like you, not a lot, but we can even put you driving a mecha. So here you're wearing like mecha armor. It'll give you cooler haircuts. You can try different haircuts as well and experiment things. And then the last one, which I got excited by is you don't have to do a mountainside photo shoot anymore. You can actually get that effect with a prompt that's climbing a mountain, hanging from a cliff, view from above, ran it a couple of times. Cause I created one of these and it worked really, really well for me. Cause you just can't mm -hmm. not look. If you look closely, you'll notice there's no way through, there's no rope. And sometimes you're just hanging with one hand that's very strong. So it doesn't get it perfectly cause it's a complicated prompt, but it looks really cool. I added in my classic helicopters exploding in the background to get some different effects. Sometimes you'll get a wonky one like this mm -hmm. or this one where you're just jumping, which is obviously you wouldn't really do. And then we pull it back. And again, we add in realistic and cinematic and there's just action in the background. So it feels like a really good photo. So you can create your LinkedIn profile. You can create your thumbnails. Anything you can think of is possible. And it's a hundred percent unique. Unlike every other AI platform where the images you generate on a public feed, there's no public feed from Artflow. Even the people who work there can't see your images. They can't act access the actor you've created. So no one else can make images of Jonathan or no one else can make images of Janae. It's all locked in there. So that's why I really love this tool. It's absolutely a major part of my business. And I'm excited I got to share it with you. I hope you found it kind of cool and interesting. I mean, I love it. Can it do details like running in the rain or something? Let's try. Yeah, let's try a couple of them live. Penny and I love Khan. that you don't have to put like a whole book for the prompt. It's just like a sentence or two. Yeah, I don't like to get overly complicated. I find that it doesn't really make a difference if you do a really long prompt or a really short one on here. So the one thing is that it does take a little bit of time to generate. If you're on the free plan, it can take two or three minutes to generate and it depends on the time of day. If it's daytime in America, I've noticed their servers are slower and nighttime, it's a little bit faster. And still, that's not a lot of time for these quality of images because the use of these, again, it's not just for talking video thumbnails. People can do children's books. People can do other types of picture books people can do a lot with this and the one on the bottom left that's pretty spot on like yeah that's pretty really real. yeah like that's pretty wow so the details like the wetness of the jacket and the environment even the fists you know because in other tools i've seen the hands just look way off this is really good. What I always do is I then will start to add in styles. So I might add in cinematic, which mostly just adds a little bit lighting. So I do a little bit of crafting, but it's mostly just adding or removing styles. Once I go, okay, this is a structure I like, or it can accomplish this. There's not a lot of learning curve. There's not a lot of complexity. What I encourage you to do the first time you try it is just generate an image with each of the different styles to see if you like how fantasy looks. I didn't think I would like horror, but I sometimes go, oh, that's a good facial expression. For me, certain ones don't work very well, like the anime and 3D anime never work well, but neon punk sometimes works really well. Some of them don't mix and match, like if you use line art and another one, then it won't know whether or not to be black and white or color. So now we just have a little bit more movement because we've added in cinematic. We haven't made a major change yeah. and we can add other things if you want an element in the background, if you want lightning in the background, so we can just yeah, add in add lightning. lightning. And this is really my process. So when I'm generating images for myself for a thumbnail, I'll just run a bunch of prompts while I'm working on something else until I go, I really like that image. And then I really like that image and I'll play around. So I might change the color of the outfit that I'm wearing. And I like that I don't have to 
do an actual costume change. I don't have to redo lighting. Lighting in the background. That looks amazing. Oh, that's the top pretty two cool. Are good. Yeah, the top two are great. See, this is so awesome. And see how fast that they're generated. What I think is cool is how you mentioned that their team is responsive and talking to you, taking feedback. <laughs> And they update all the time. They push an update almost every day. So these here, the templates, used to be on the bottom row. I've messaged them. They have a Discord server and they responded within a couple of minutes. And the community is really good. So when you want a new feature, you want to ask them stuff. And they're really trying to make it great. And the pricing is really low. I'm on the paid plan. It's like $77 a year. And I just did that. I was like, I'm making so many images. I want to do them faster. That's the only thing I paid the upgrade for. They do other things like you can make videos. You can do talking head videos. I don't play with any of that stuff because this feature is so good that those other things I haven't really messed around with. So I'm a I big fan it. of the tool. I'm going to start using it even more and more because this is awesome. Okay. What is the general at the top by the sizing? Does that matter? Yeah. So if you want to do a portrait or a presenter, so if you're going to make videos like this, you can see his mouth is moving. You have to generate an image for presenter. I don't do those. I don't need to do that. Okay. And if you want to do a portrait one that you're going to use for their other video thing. So because I'm not making videos, I'm always in general and I'm always in 3.2 and I'm always in Artflow version two. I very rarely change anything else. I never use the exclude from image prompt where you can say don't show hands or don't show feet. That never works right anyway. So I am always looking for like a minimum effort for maximum result. And this is really the one that gets you there. This is going to boost your clicks. It allows you to compete with people that have that massive budget. Now you can punch above your weight. You don't have to have an entire photography team. You don't have to do makeup before your photo shoot, do the photo shoot, then do post-production and coloration and all of those yeah, things. That takes that... a lot of time and energy. I'm telling you because the photos have to then be edited. And you're saying if you don't have a 200 person team yet, like a Mr. Beast, it helps solo creators or just small business owners that are creators with a smaller team be able to punch at a higher weight. I'm always looking for tools that can give me a really specific business use. That's what I talk about. If you guys want to follow me on LinkedIn or follow my newsletter, I'm always looking for, is this going to help your business? Not just, is this cool? This is where lucky this is a tool that's both that yeah. it will help you get clicks. There's a lot of tools that help you to make AI LinkedIn profile picture and they're very expensive and you pay for like 400 pictures. You hope one works and puts you in the right suit and all of that stuff. This allows you to do that. It allows you to do simple pictures that just look nice as well as complicated pictures that are going to boost the clicks because a lot of us, let's be honest, take one LinkedIn profile picture. We leave it up there for 10 or 15 years and all those people that have seen it so many times are not going to notice, but you'll find if you just change your profile picture, all those people will suddenly go, oh, wait, I haven't talked to Jonathan in a long time. Mm -hmm. It can revitalize and give you a nice little boost. Yeah, I love it. If you're going to be doing LinkedIn newsletters, LinkedIn live events, you could probably use some of these images on a website or a blog, a YouTube channel, just anything that will require thumbnails. Then I think that it's important for you to learn just some of the basic principles that are going to make people want to click your stuff and up level you as a brand. Yeah, I use these pictures from Artflow on product shots on my sales pages. I have a picture of me, the mountain climbing one hanging like this. Mm -hmm. That's on one of my sales pages that does really well. Until you notice there's no rope and that's how you know it's not real. I'm always trying to play in that line of where it's interesting enough, but not misleading. It's in the realm of entertainment. I'm always trying to be entertaining. And that's what's really cool about this. So this allows you to embed yourself everywhere in your business because you are your brand. One of the problems with other AI generators is that you're not in the thumbnail. It's like when you visit a blog, we've all visited a blog to find the answer to a question and left. And someone said, where did you find that answer? You go, I have no idea. This at least creates something that's memorable. So your face is everywhere without having to do tons of photo shoots or buy a camera. You don't need any of those things. I love it. This was a super valuable presentation. I think what's most important when it comes to AI, especially if you're a business owner who is growing their brand and creating content, it goes back to what Jonathan said. Are you going to use this thing a lot? Because if not, it's cool to know about, but it's really not useful for where you are in your business right now. And in my current stage of creation, this is super useful for us and my team. So God bless you. Have a phenomenal day. Ciao.